Our agency side is growing and we are getting to the exciting parts. So in the last video, we prepared our default template. We created our first snippets um, to make sure that we can only focus on the center part. And now we can finally move to our first custom template for our projects. So what we are planning to do for the projects is we are going to have a nice grid of images with the titles of the projects on this page and in order to do this we can't use the default template any anymore we have to create a custom template for it and we are going to copy and paste this default template and call it projects.php by doing this we are linking it to our project page because the projects page has a projects.txt so kirby knows okay i should load the projects.php template if it is there if it's not there i'm going to fall back to the default template with the new projects.php we now have the center part which we can focus on and as a first step let's just try if it even works if our linking work correctly and let's just put in some text here Pro projects go here just see if it works at all. So we go on our page, on our projects page, and here's the text that we just added. So let's see if the other pages still work as expected. So yeah, the other pages still load our default template. So everything is ready to get started with the projects grid. For our projects grid that we want to place here, we can go back a few steps to what we've done for the main menu. So for the main menu, we've created a list of menu items that has been automatically generated from the main pages that we've added to our content folder. So basically those here um, with the sorting numbers. And we have done that in our menu snippet in the last video. So this is the code for it. So we have a simple HTML list, unordered list. We have a PHP for each loop that goes through the children of the site, which is the collection of main pages that I just mentioned. With the listed method, we made sure that only the ones with the sorting number are included. And then for each item in that collection, we created a link um, with the URL to that page and with the title from that page. So we can copy that and paste it into our projects template. I like to do this whenever possible to get started without writing too much code. So if you can reuse something, copy and paste is your friend. So if we put it in here like this, it totally works, but it doesn't really give us the result that we are looking for. So if we go back into the browser and we refresh here, you can see it does the same that it does for the main menu. So it gives us a list of those main pages as I mentioned. And of course, this is not really what is useful for us in this scenario, we want to step one level down, except uh, instead of having the main pages, we want to go one level down from here and we want to have the children of the projects page. And how do we do that? We do that by replacing site with page. So now it takes the children of the current page, with its, which is the projects page in this case. And um, we can leave this here because it's quite useful. We can still have just the listed pages or the ones with the sorting number um, included in the list. So we get all the projects that have a sorting number and the last one is not included. This is a very simple way for such project grids or um, albums or whatever you want to build on your site for maybe team members or something um, to have like featured uh, items in the list that are included and others that maybe not be included, um, but you can still access them um, with their URL. And so you can create those little um, lists with featured and not featured uh, items um, with those sorting numbers pretty easily. So if we leave it like this and we switch back, we get now a list of all the projects that are created in our content folder below the projects level. And we can click through our projects. So we are almost there already. So this is, this is quite cool. One thing that I want to change here is I want to change this to project. I like this a bit more to keep the 
variable names in a, such a loop more readable or understandable to know, okay, this is about projects, so we understand what's going on here. Um, and as a next step, we now have to make sure, or we now want to include images from those projects. So if we go back to our content folder and we have a look at the individual project folders, we can see that all of those projects already have some images. A few have more images, a couple have just one image. That doesn't really matter at this point. But it would be nice to list the first image as our cover feature image in this project grid. So how can we do this? Um, let's give this a bit more space. Um, and let's see, I often like to start with the, the HTML code that I want to have in this list and then I can see how I can make it dynamic. So I think what I would like to do here is to make this a figure element, which is I think perfect for such cover images. And then we can make the, the title the fig caption and here we would then place an image. So we now have to get this um, dynamically and we want to load those images from the project, from each individual project. As I said um, before in, in previous videos, this is a the page object. So each individual page object for each individual um, project. So we can do all the things that we saw before. We can access the fields from the from each individual page, we can access the URL. We've seen the children method to go one level deeper. Um, in this case, what we want to do is we want to access the files of each project. And Kirby has a method called files, which let us do that. So we get a collection of all the files that are stored in the project folder. So no matter if you store images in there or PDF files or spreadsheets or anything else, they would be included in this list of files. And um, all of those items in that collection are file objects and the file objects themselves have again those kind of methods. So they have a URL method, They can you can access the fields that you stored in additional text files for each file. So all of those um, things that you already know from the pages also work for files. And they have a couple more things that are more relevant to files, which we will see in a second. So we could now do a for each loop and go through all the files for that page and create a gallery out of that or a download list. This is not really what we want to do here. We could also go and take the first file like this, or maybe the last file or a particular file. Um, and then from there on, we could, for example, access the URL or the file name or the extension or anything like this. But again, this is not really what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to only care about images. We don't really want to list a PDF here or a spreadsheet. Um, so what we could do is we could filter those files by type image and then get the first image and then get the URL of that first image. So this chain is pretty long, quite intimidating. And because this is such a use, uh, such a, um, a topic that happens so often, we have shortcuts for this. So instead of this, we can reduce this to images. And instead of images and getting the first one of those, we can reduce this to image. So this would take the first image sorted alphabetically, so the one that, that lands on top, which is in this case this one, and it would return the URL of this one. So this is how we can, can make this come alive. If we echo the URL, you will see the result. Let's remove the image tag. So we get a list of URLs for each image. And that's quite cool. So we could now wrap this in an image tag and get exactly what we were looking for. So now we get a list of really big images for each project. We can make this a bit simpler by letting Kirby create the image tag for us. This we can do it like this. If we just echo that image object that we just got, we uh, Kirby does the hard work for us and creates the HTML image tag. 
And this is nice, especially for prototyping. If you don't need additional control over the image tag, you can use it like this and then get just to the point that you want to get to in a, in a matter of seconds. But looking at this, it's again not really what we want because in such a grid, as you can see here, we have huge images. So the originals are pretty big. Um, they totally break our layout. They might even have different formats. So some might be portraits, some might be square, some might be landscape. So we somehow need to clean this up a bit more for our grid. And instead of uh, firing up Photoshop or any other image editing tool, we can let Kirby do the hard work here again and play Photoshop within Kirby. So we can call the crop method on our image object that we just got. And we can let Kirby crop the images for us. So let's say we want to crop every image in that grid into a box of 400 by 400 pixels. This is how we would do it. So we would crop it um, with 400 as a width parameter. The second parameter is the, the height. And if you don't specify it, Kirby just takes the width at the height. So you have a rectangular box or a square box. So now we have a, crypt, a cropped grid of images, which already starts to look quite, quite nice. And Kirby doesn't squeeze the images into those boxes or stretch them or anything. They, it really just crops them and tries to fit them into the box as well as, uh, as, as good as possible. Um, as I said, the second parameter would be the height. So if we want to have a bit more control over the output format, we could also specify a height and then have a different format here. We could also let Kirby resize the image instead of cropping it. So if we prefer to um, not crop something of the image, which is often important when you work with photography, um, then we can also use resize instead of crop and then it will fit the image into those dimensions as good as it can, um, but keep the aspect ratio and the image is still, has still the original format. And then you can put it in into a square um, frame yourself, or you can just leave the, the format as it is. So this is a really, really powerful way of prototyping with images really quickly. So you can even use this as a design tool and just try different formats and see how it works in, in your layout or in your design. And when we open those images in a new tab, you can see that this is actually a resized image. And having a look at the URL, you can see that Kirby stores those resized files in the media folder. So we can open our media folder and then see that Kirby creates those um, thumbnails for us. And it does that um, in a way that it doesn't destroy the original files. So the original files are still as they were before in our content folder. So this is the original file and it resized that one, but never really touched the original. And it's, I think this is super important um, because you want to provide like high quality images and then you might need to have different um, variations of that in order to um, optimize the results for different uh, devices or different screen sizes. And you don't really want to worry about the originals being destroyed. Okay, so we got a lot farther, further uh, and closer to our final result of having a nice grid for our projects. The only thing that is left now is to style it a bit. So I won't go too much into detail of styling them. Um, I'm giving them a projects class name. I'm opening up my index CSS file and I, now I can start creating a nice little grid for our images. So I keep it simple. I will use the new grid display format CSS. Well, how do you call it? I'm, I'm lost here um, to create those. And I really love this because it's such a fast way to prototype such stuff. And then if you need fallbacks, you can still put the fallbacks back in later. Um, let's remove the list style. 
and then we are almost there. Let's make sure the images within the each column are as wide as the column. So this is how it looks like. And now we need a bit of space between the columns. So let's use grid column gap and make that 1.5. And the row gap should be a bit wider or higher. And so we get to a nice result and the, it starts to look really cool. And as a final measure, we will put a margin to this. And now we have a bit of distance between the image and the final title. And as a next step, what we could do is we could maybe include the year here or we have a category field for each um, image so we could include that as well. Maybe be a bit more um, creative with the formats or a bit more creative with the grid. Uh, that, is, that is totally open and I leave this up to you. But it does what it should do so we have a nice portfolio coming up in a matter of just a few lines of CSS and a few lines of HTML. We got resized images, we got our title, we got the links to our projects. We have a way to decide between featured and non-featured projects. So it's really cool and really quickly done in Kirby. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.